I don't think I can fold for four dollars. Even if I had nothing, like I do. I can do. Fighting for the 1-3 game for $500. First hand I get involved in, I got ace-queen offsuit from the hijack. Open it up to 15, get called from the button, the small blind, and the big blind. So we're going to go four ways to this flop with $60 in the pot. Flop comes out, 8-7-3 with two clubs. Well, this flop doesn't hit my range, and it should hit my opponents pretty hard. So if it gets checked to me, I'm just going to be checking it. Well, the first two players check, I check, and the button checks back too. So far, so good. Turn card comes as a king of clubs. Now this does hit my range. It does give me the nut flush draw. And if my opponents show weakness, I think this would be an excellent opportunity to take it away. So the first two players check. I'm going to go ahead and do a delayed C bet for $25. And it looks like this is going to get through because my opponents fold one by one. It's not a big pot, but they all add up at the end of the day. Find myself in middle position with two eights, open for a raise to 15. End up getting uh, three callers for the 15, including the big blind. So we're going four ways to this flop with 60 in, and the flop comes jack, eight, eight. It's not every day you flop quads. Uh, the only problem is it's really hard to get any value out of another player, because like, what else could they have? So I was thinking to myself, how would I go about betting this? Will I bet the flop? Will I slow play it? Well, I didn't really have to worry about that too much because after the small blind checks, the big blind decides to lead out into me. And it wasn't for a small sizing. He bets $75 over the size of the pot. Uh, very unusual. Um, this definitely looks like he has a jack in his hand. Maybe he would do this with a hand like 910. I don't know. Obviously, I'm going to be calling here. I'm not going to be putting in a raise. If he's being this aggressive, I'm just going to let him go do his stuff. The other two players fold out, and we get a turn card of a 10 of diamonds. I was really hoping for a jack, of course, but it didn't matter. He wasn't shy about putting $105 in on the turn. Well, this still looks like a jack to me. Maybe a hand as strong as jack 10. But, you know, I think I only got one move here. And let's just put in the smooth call and see what happens on the river. All right, got $428 in, going to the river, and it is another 10. Well, he insta jams, and I insta call, and I turn over my eights as he shows King Jack. So he flopped top pair with a decent kicker and decided he was just going to barrel away, uh, hoping that I'll fold a better pair because maybe he thought I had a bigger pair and he was trying to represent the eight. Well, it didn't work out and uh, we win a very large pot. Well, if we won an $800 pot with eights, let's see what we can do with nines. So I'm in the cutoff. I open for a raise and make it 20 after one limper. I get a call from the button, the small blind and the limper. So we're going four ways to this flop with $83 in the pot. You know, in all the years I've been playing, I never flop quads back to back. Let's see if I can do it here. Flop comes out, king, six, six. Almost looking like nines. They're just upside down. First two players check, and now it's on me. Well, in general, this is a pretty good flop for my raising range. I, there's a king out there. I could definitely have hands like ace, king, king, queen, maybe aces or kings. Probably don't have too many sixes in my range. So I decided this would be a good hand to go ahead and see bet. I make it 25. The player directly behind me doesn't think too long before making the call. Uh, immediately alarm bells are going off that this player probably has a king. And then the small blind check raises to 75. Kind of a small sizing, looking like he wants a call. Obviously, I'm done with the hand. 
I'm thinking that he could definitely have a hand like uh, a six in it. And the other player probably has a king. So let's just get rid of this and uh, we'll see what happens. So after posturing for a second or two, I ended up uh, mucking my hand and kept the camera rolling to see what happens. The player on the button now jams all in. He has about, I don't know, $160 or so. The other player snap calls. Run out comes with a queen of clubs and another blank of an eight of diamonds. Button rolls over ace king. Small blind says he has the same and they were both playing ace king. Well, there's one limper in front of me. I'm in the low jack with a suited ace. Definitely going to be putting in a race here. I make it $15. End up getting called in uh, four places. So we're going five ways to this flop with 75 in. Flop comes out really good for my particular hand, but not great for my range. It comes 10, 7, 6 with the 10, 7 of diamonds. First three players check it over to me, and now it's my turn. Here... There's a couple of ways you can play this. You can either go ahead and just bet it because you got, you know, a great equity advantage. Or you can check it and be very disguised if you happen to hit a flush because everyone would think you bet your flush draw. Well, I decided to check it this time. Player in the cutoff decides to make a bet of $35. Just my feeling when he made the bet is that he wasn't that strong. The other three players end up folding out. So it comes back around to me, and now here comes my other decision. Whether to go ahead and check raise at this moment, and most likely take down the pot if he doesn't have anything strong. And if he does, you know, call or put some more pressure on me, I got tons of equity and I can just go with my hand. Well, he has a pretty deep stack, so I decided to go for the call, see if I can get some more money in the pot. Well, the turn card is a really good one. It's a six of diamonds. It does pair the board, so that's a little worrisome. But I check it over to him, and now he bets for $50. Kind of a small bet, and I think he actually has something this time. So I'm, I'm thinking he just made a flush. And this is a great opportunity to get some more money in. He probably doesn't put me on a flush. He probably thinks I have maybe a top pair, maybe an over pair because I raised preflop. So I figure if I put in a race here that he might just go ahead and jam on me. So I make it $200 and he thinks for only a short while before putting in the call. So when he puts in the call, I figured he has a hand that has some showdown value. So I'm thinking, okay, he has a smaller flush. Maybe he's afraid I might have something like a, a full house with pocket tens. And there's always that possibility that he's slow playing a monster like seven, six or pocket sevens. Well, the river card comes as an ace of clubs, probably as good as I can hope for. It's always nice to have a card that's blocking a potential full house like ace six. So I bet 200. And the reason I did is because I think he has either a weak flush and I don't think he'll call a big bet, but he called pretty quickly. So I think I let one go. I show my ace eight and he mucks his hand. He later told me that he had a six which I guess makes sense. And I think if I made a bigger bet, he would be able to get away from it. A quick announcement about our meetup game, which will be next Sunday, March 26 at 5 p.m. We're going to be playing 1-3, no limit, match the stack. Uh, it's going to be myself, Andrew Locke, and Kenichi is going to be joining us. So if you have a chance, sign up on Poker Atlas or call Capital Casino. They can put you up on the list. And it's going to be a fun evening. So come on down. I'd love to see you. Well, we had a pretty good session there, but we're going to come back, try our luck again. This time, our first hand of the day, we pick up pocket sevens for middle position, make it $15, get two callers. So we're going three ways to a flop here with 49 in. Flop comes eight, seven, deuce. So we flop middle set, beautiful. It's checked to us. I bet 20. It's kind of a wet board. Both players end up putting in the call. Turn card's a little worrisome. It's a six of clubs. It brings in the obvious straight, makes the board more connected. I decided this time I'll bet 55. Don't want to give anyone a cheap draw to beat me. Both players this time decided to fold. So I was kind of happy about that. And uh, after they fold, one of the other players says, oh, I got gotcha. you. I would have had six, eight. And I go, oh, maybe six, eight's no good. And he goes, oh, it was good. So... Just for that player, here it is. 
I had you. There's a $6 straddle on his hand and uh, it comes to me in the small blind. I was going to raise, but then the big blind acted out of turn and put in a raise. So I decided just to go ahead and call. Uh, he's a little bit of a live wire, you might say. He could be doing this with good hands. He could be doing this with nothing. And uh, it seems like he's getting a little bit uh, aggressive here. So I think I have a good hand to be a calling station. So when he puts in the raise, I'm going to put in the call. And we're going to go three ways uh, to this flop. Well, we see an interesting flop. It's not the one that we had in mind but it's the one that we have to work with. So it comes out nine high with a five and a deuce. There are two clubs out there, so it's not a great flop. We have top pair with a weak kicker, and now our opponent bets $100. The other player ends up folding out, and it's to me. What to do, what to do. Now, against some players who uh, bet pot-sized bets like this on a board like that, I'll probably just give up on them, uh, you know, especially if they're on the tighter side of the spectrum. This player is definitely not one of those. He is a, um, I would say he's a little bit looser and wilder, and he is quite capable of barreling with, you know, overcards, flush draws, and of course the dreaded over pairs. But I'm going to look him up. So I put in the call for the 100. And we get to see a turn card, which is a deuce of diamonds. I would rather it be an eight, but you know, you make two pair, you make two pair. I check again. He again fires for $100. Well, here's another decision point. I think I'm ahead right, right now at this point. And I think he has this over cards. And maybe I should just put in a raise, put them all in. He has about $160 left and give him the fold out whatever equity he has. Or I can just call and let him barrel off. I decided to go for the call and let him barrel off. I think that he'll probably stick it all in if a blank comes. Which happens to come a two of spades. Which is a very good card. I now have a full house. Of course he can have an over pair. He went to go all in. But he left some chips behind before he said anything. So the dealer says he can only put in $100. Again, I'm more than happy to call off this $100. And he shows Queen Jack of Spades. So he was just barreling with Queen High. And uh, I'm glad he didn't catch a Queen or a Jack. Well, right before this hand started, a player in seat five uh, said that he was a fan of the vlog and that he came out from New York to come to California. And uh, he came to Capitol to come see me. And I gave him a lucky Zeus chip, and I'm thinking to myself, this might have been bad timing. There are two limps in front of me, and I decided to raise to $25 with my ace-king from the low-jack position. The player from New York puts in the call for the 25, and so does two of the limpers. So we're going to end up going four ways to this flop with 110 in the center. Flop is really good. It comes ace-ace-7 with two clubs. So we got three aces with a king kicker. First player and second player check, I bet 25. Looking back on this, I need to go larger. Someone could have a pocket pair that they're not going to be folding, and someone else could ha maybe have a flush draw. The player from New York puts in the call, and so does the player towards my right. Turn card is a bad one. It is a jack of clubs. First player checks, I check. Player from New York bets $100. Player to my right puts in the quick call. Well, at this point, I know I'm beat because if you got two players putting in 100 bucks, one of them has at least a flush, maybe both of them do, and the other one maybe has an ace. So you're up against an ace and a flush or two flushes. Not a good spot to be in, but I think I'm getting a decent price to try to draw at this thing. It cost me 100 bucks to win a $500 pot. It's close, but I'm not folding. Let's face it, I got three aces. River card comes as a jack of diamonds, which is wonderful. The player to my right insta jams. Of course, I'm thinking he has an ace. I think about it for a second, and I put in the call. The other player folds what he says was eight, nine of clubs. And the player to my right shows a ace four, and I show him the ace king. So we're going to chop this up. And he said that he got lucky, and I told him that we both got lucky because I think we we're up against a flush all along. 
One player limps in front of me. I make a 20 with ace-king. End up getting two callers, including the player to my right. So we're going three ways to this flop with 64. And the flop comes out queen, five, six with two diamonds. I do not hold a diamond in my hand. So when I get checked to, I'm just going to check this one back. The player behind me also puts in the check. So I might be good here. I might have the best hand. But uh, let's see what the turn will bring. Turn card is a three. Shouldn't really change too much. I figure the player on the button would bet any queen, five, six, or straight or flush draw. So I'm not really worried about them. The player to my right could have checked something like top pair or flush draw. So it'll be interesting to see what they do here. They do end up checking. I check it, and so does the button. The river card comes as a queen of spades. This card is actually really good for me because it pairs the board. And if anyone had a pair, I think they would have fired by now, especially top pair. So anyone who bets here, I think it's just going to be a bluff. Player to my right bets out for 20. This is like a super easy call. The other player folds out. Player to my right shows. King Jack offsuit. And I win this one with ace king. Here's a fun little bonus hand. There was a couple limpers in front of me. And I'm on the button with 7-6 suited. I can't resist with putting in a raise. So I make a $20. I get called by the small blind, big blind, and a limper. So we're going four ways to this flop, which comes out jack, jack, four with two clubs. Well, against three opponents, and one of them is a short stack, I don't know whether this is a good idea to go ahead and fire on this board. I have basically nothing and not much for any kind of back door. So when it's checked to me, I'm just going to check this sucker back and uh, give up on it. I'm not going to put any more money in. Turn card comes five of diamonds well now i got a little bit of equity and it goes check 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 okay i can't resist i'm gonna have to take a stab at this i could have slow played a jack i could have slow played a pair like pocket tens nines eights so when it's checked to me i'm gonna go ahead and do a delayed c bet for forty dollars hoping it gets through the big blind now jams all in but he only has forty four dollars so it's only going to cost me four more dollars to call, and there's no way I'm going to be folding, even if I don't have anything. So I put in the call, and uh, hoping that we can connect on something. River card comes. You guessed it. Three of clubs. We make the straight. He rolls over ace king, and we take this down with our straight. Man, he really should have shoved all in pre-flop with that ace king. So on day one, we ended up winning $865. Day two, we had a profit of $670. We definitely ran good, flopped well, got paid off in the right spots, didn't run into any really, really tough situations. No real cold decks went against us. So it was a little bit of a sun run, uh, and we were, were happy to, to book the win. Anyway, I really do appreciate you guys watching and checking out the vlog. If you haven't hit that like and subscribe button, please do so. We're getting close uh, to 8,000 subscribers. Uh, that'll make my day if we can pick up a few here today. Until next time, good luck at the tables, and hopefully I'll see you next Sunday at Capital Casino for our 1-3 meetup game.